Hi everybody, welcome back to Borderlands 3. My name is Mikey Dubs and I decided to try something a little bit different for this video. With Borderlands 4 coming out soon and the movie having just been released, I decided, you know, as a Borderlands player or someone who's played this game for a long time, to kind of give my thoughts and the whole BL2 versus BL3 thing, like how that's always been a thing since, honestly, since Borderlands 3 launched. And probably slightly after it launched because still there was still that, you know, that honeymoon phase with a lot of players with BL3, but... Even so, I do think some players like, stopped liking it pretty much immediately. And so, I'm while I'm pushing through DLC 2 here for two reasons. One, I want to unlock Ice to the Admissible for my Skull Masher farm, as you can see in the top left. But two, I also want to get myself a Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge. So, we're not going to be taking any side quests or anything like that. We're just going to be pushing through DLC 2 here. But I want to take my time to like, discuss what I think about the Borderlands games as far as like with all the controversy of like what people talk about like what the big problems are and why one is better than the other or how gearbox failed and all this other stuff um i like to think obviously like any other person that my takes are fairly reasonable so i'll just get started i think that borderlands 3 and borderlands 2 are very very i wouldn't i wouldn't say exactly equal games but I would say they're very similar in overall strength um, of game overall. But I think that their strengths are so insanely different and their weaknesses are, are so insanely different that it's really hard to compare them shot for shot. Now, if I had to just delete one game and only play the other one forever, I would say I would delete BL3. And that's simply because of the mod support that BL2 has. I mean, there's a ton of mods for BL3, but BL2 has amazing mods. Anyways, when it comes to Borderlands 3 and why I think the community split so heavily over what they like and didn't like, I'm going to say my number one issue with BL3, despite how, think, how great I think it is, I would say the number one issue that I have with the game is visual pollution. Now, I have chosen to play Flak in this playthrough. A big reason why is that as a Moe's player, I experienced a lot of visual pollution with how much splash damage you do. Okay, with how, how much explosions are a part of her gameplay. So I picked Flak. A big reason this time was because, one, I liked the idea of Beastmaster. But two, I wanted less visual pollution. And as you can see, I'm not even rocking Elemental Gun. And I really can't see much what is going on. I can see a little bit. You can say, well, you're using a Monarch, right? But the same goes for almost all late game builds like a light show obviously the light show makes it impossible to see anyways like that feels like almost every late game build that i've played and i've played through Moe's and flak i can't really see what i'm doing most of the time and i don't know if it's the environment or it's the weapons the visual blur and i have a mod installed to reduce visual pollution so it, it's i think Borderlands 2 has so much less visual pollution, in my opinion, from playing one. I've, I, I've played through several characters, and two, I have been playing Roguelands on my channel for a good amount of time now, and that is like end game visual pollution style. Let's see if we can figure out how to get through here. I'm assuming it has something to do with this parkour that's just so conveniently placed. Let's go. But visual pollution to me is a big issue in Borderlands 3 and in Wonderlands. I still like both games tremendously. But as a player who spends most of his time playing the end game and farming the end game, the visual pollution becomes a major, major issue, just not being able to see anything. I know that it doesn't really become an issue to the end game for a lot of players, and I completely understand if like this particular issue doesn't mean that much to you in the grand scheme of things. Um, like, look at these ratchets. I they camouflage in with this environment. This is a big issue that I have with even the bandits. There's not enough, I feel like, contrast between the enemies and the environment. The environments are diverse. Look at how it gets dark and light and the rate and the lights are just amazing. But I lose the enemies inside of that environment. It's not like the, the, the desert that is Pandora and the enemies are different colors than that desert. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, for some reason, I think I like that better. I mean, I completely lose the enemy in my bullets of the Monarch and that's this is not an elemental. It's because I'm in fade away. You're saying, oh, you can use a different action skill. Do you want to see what rack attack turns into? Like, rack attack, no augments. Rack attack, no augments. I can turn down my visual pollution by equipping a, a different 
So I'll, I will do that. No bonus radiation damage anymore. How about even no grenade slot at all? Okay. And I don't, I personally don't mind the revolter. But no grenade slot any, anymore, so I don't get any more of that radiation. But the thing is, if you want to play endgame and push through endgame bosses and push through these, you know, these story parts quicker, you're going to want to be taking advantage of all the damage you can. And the game puts a lot of, you know, a lot of emphasis on building up different types of elements in order to boost your damage. It's not the only way to do it, but it's a lot of way to do it, especially for radiation. So it's a little bit, you know, a little bit frustrating as a player who farms at the end game to have to sit here and not be able to see what I'm shooting at for a lot of the time. To me, visual pollution in this game has always been an issue. To me, I, I doesn't feel like Borderlands 2 has that issue very much at all. I mean, in my opinion, I can see what I'm doing with a lot of the characters. It just feels like a more clear game. Um, get mainframe door open. I can think I can do that. Shoot this target. Is that is that all I need to do? Nope. It looks like it's gonna be multiple targets. This is just like the, it's just like farming the, the tidal wave shotgun in the beginning of the game or the heat wave. From what's his name? But butt munch. I think so. Except this time it's two. Sub death trap. So that's a that's gonna be number one. Biggest issue I have for Borderlands 3, I'm not going to do echo logs, is the visual pollution. You can't really see what you're doing. I, um, I'm constantly pinging all the time, especially on Moe's. And if you're saying that you can just do a different build and you can turn down the visual pollution, I agree with you 100%. Except, as a player who wants to farm endgame items, I, am, I want to use endgame viable builds. And for me... For this character, the build I'm drawn to the most that works in Endgame is a simple fadeaway flak build. So I'm drawn to this build. I don't need... Okay, I, for me personally, I don't need build diversity as long as the strategy that I like best is good. You know what I'm saying? So, that, so by saying that, what I'm saying is I want build diversity in the game so that the builds that I choose to run are good. That's pretty much the only reason. Dialogue skip, by the way. It's the only reason I want build diversity. So, like, when I come up with a build, and I don't, it's, I don't need to be that creative. Honestly, I'm doing fadeaway damage. Okay, where I just rock multiple pellet weapons. This is as simple as it gets for flak. Honestly, I am. But I like this build. You know, as long as this build is good, I'm happy. If this build was not good, I would not be happy. Now, that being said, the longer I play, the more builds I want to try. But as far as I haven't even geared up my first time, you, you saw me against that Tink of Cunning. If you watch those videos, like I need to upgrade my gear. I need to get stronger. A pearl of enough knowledge will help me in that. Excuse me. I need to follow that trap. But I need first want to take out this reanimator because I don't think that will be a good enemy to be have around. All right, where do I got to go? Just got to jump up here. Where's Death Trap at? Is Death Trap over there? Okay, yeah. But Death Trap is in combat, so I really think, honestly, I have to just clear the enemies and then Death Trap will get out of combat. Hey, look how dark that enemy is. It's just a bandit enemy. Like, oh, wow, I can see him so clearly in the light room, except for the fact that he's shooting Cryo Novas. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's all visual pollution, all of it. with so many effects happening on screen and I, I understand wanting to give wanting to give very strong items an animation on screen that gives you that added effect as a player like wow that's really good I like that like the revolter on the side you know having an a visual effect is a really big thing but when you have so many visual effects going on it, it feels to me like a, just a simple visual effect fade away when I enter fade away all my shots Get purple amp. It works on all guns. But even my clockwork red is purple amp. But you've designed flak to be good with multiple projectiles. Right? That is what makes him the strongest with fadeaway builds. So by default, fadeaway builds are going to favor multi-projectiles. So even if I'm running a non-elemental weapon, I will still get the amp animation on all my shots. 
So I can't avoid it. I can't get away from it if I want to have fun using one of Flax three action three. Remember, because the game launched with three, I'm using one of Flax three action skills to design a build around it. I'm just playing basic Borderlands. So regardless of which of these you choose, like a rack attack action skill, a gamma burst action skill, and you design your playstyle around it, you're gonna have a lot of visual pollution, as well as you can use different class mods to change your playstyle. And luckily, what I like for Flack is that these really don't even increase visual pollution. But for someone like Moe's, that can create a ton of visual pollution. Like, say, the Minesweeper. Um, like, say, the Green Monster. Like, the Minesweeper drops grenades. Can, can you uh, death trap? Uh, what's going on here? You uh, bugged out? Or... I also feel like this happens a lot in BO3 where things just get bugged out. Do a save quit? Dude, are you going to... Is he gonna make me destroy all these guys or what? Aim down sight me. So I'm just trying to use an end game viable flak build. And in order to see anything, I gotta ping it. Gotta ping it. Unfortunately. It is what it is. I think I would enjoy the game much, much more. If, say, Flax, when Flax Fadeaway was active, you didn't get amp on non-elemental guns. Give me a choice. Right? So, yeah. I would say give me a choice. And let's actually swap to something. I'm not going to use a Skull Master until I get a really good one. Let's do... I think... Like, don't even get me started on the Rowan's Call. Like, you want to see some... Oh, so that's Assault Rifle. I need to do something that's not Assault Rifle. Do I have an SMG or something that's, that's decent that I can use for this? How about a Hellwalker? Okay. This is a Hellwalker. The vi and the, because of the ricochet effect on Jacob's weapons with crits, that even the Hellwalker has, like, even a point-blank shotgun has pretty, pretty bad visual pollution. And this is without, this is without getting bonus radiation damage. So, like, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to deep up myself so that I can see better. You know what I'm saying? Is, isn't that weird? So, if we're talking solutions and how to fix the problem for visual pollution, and I will always offer solutions after I'm done complaining about something. Always. Offer solutions. Okay, this is going to hurt some feelings, but remove radiation. You can remove radiation in Borderlands 4, fix the problem heavily, because radiation is what a lot of the visual pollution comes from. Because every enemy is exploding, explosions cause visual pollution. Number two, if you're going to be... If you're going to have amped shots you know like when you have a shield that gives you amp damage the install shard on death trap i want to but he's moving kind of slowly <laughs> even with dialogue skip you still have to wait for animations to be over so right see look at look at the visual pollution like all the fire shots just if you could just may, maybe make that narrower but removing radiation or reworking radiation so that it doesn't have as much of an of like an explosive visual effect could be great do the same thing for cryo i don't need to see a million different elements honestly um i am a big believer in the holy trinity of fire damage corrosive damage and shock damage being all you really really need and if you want to add utility elements i totally get it like i get that cryo was really cool dark magic is really cool and all that stuff but i if you're gonna have all those utility ones i you gotta turn down the visual effects for those bad Larrys, like to a crawl. To an absolute crawl so that they're barely visible, I think. The ricochet bullets aren't so bad until they turn into fire bullets, which a lot of your guns will be fire. There might be characters that have less visual pollution, but it's hard to imagine that Zane and Amara would have less visual pollution than Flak. I'm assuming Moe's is the worst, but I just kind of wish that there was less visual pollution in general in the entire game. So that's my number one is visual pollution. I think Borderlands 2 does it way, way better than Borderlands 3. But now I'm going to give something that I don't like about uh, BL2, which is really hard to come up with stuff that both games don't share the weaknesses. But BL2's only one action skill per character is something that... I don't like about it. I get that it was like a feature 
you know when that game came out that like it didn't exist back then but if we're talking straight up versus i think triple action skill allows you to get way more immersed into one character like i said i am a guy who likes one build like i do not mind just using one build and making it stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until i get everything perfect which you can spend years what can i damage this guy you can spend years getting one build to as strong as possible right so i've i'd spent years getting my mo's boots on the ground no iron bear build to as strong as possible where i just use explosives as mo's on the ground and one shot everything i get it doesn't take that much to get it going but i farmed rocketeer class mods for hours and hours and hours and i farmed for weapon damage on that class mod i i farmed for god roll flippers with consecutive hits anointments back when you didn't have a re-roll machine i you know what i'm saying like i farmed for that stuff i even did a full reset i think when mayhem 11 came out or like when when they reworked mayhem i think i did a full reset where i just said you know what i'm restarting it all i think it was when dlc dlc 3 dropped because that's when iron bear was given mayhem scaling so i used iron bear to to farm gear from from very scratch the from scratch and i pushed through all the dlcs after that with that character so to me i'm okay just rocking one character for a long time and giving me three action skills to rock is a huge pro and now that it's four, it's four now with all the characters which is kind of insane but the fourth skill tree i kind of equate with not getting bonus vault hunters which if you had to give me a choice between bonus vault hunters each of them with three action skills or bonus skill trees i would i would ask for bonus vault hunters simply because the two bonus skill trees that i've been introduced to flax and moes left me a little bit um I don't want to say underwhelmed because they're decent skill trees they're like probably better than i could come up with but they don't live up to the prowess of the original three like moses original three skill trees are what drew me to her immediately her design and everything like that i thought was like her defaultness was kind of cool I, it wasn't a cooler theme than than flack it wasn't a cooler theme than zane and it definitely wasn't a cooler theme than amara but her defaultness you know it grew on me over time but what really drew me to her were the skill trees blue blow things up green shoot fast and never run out of ammo orange get a really big shield oh and it actually turns out if you keep reading the bigger the shield the more damage you do what correct you know, and you can have these like one life builds where instead of using health gate to um, stay alive, instead you just use big shields and you add a blood letter class mod to that. Like I didn't know that back then. I just saw splash damage offense, fire rate in uh, ammo regen offense and big shield defense. Like that is exactly what I'm looking for in a character, a super structured skill tree that has clear identities, right? Very clear identities. Flak skill tree. If now that I've played him, and I know that on first read it might be a little bit hard, but Flax original three skill trees. This one's very clearly about making your pet strong and turning other people into your pets. This one is very clearly about using multiple projectiles um, and rinsing things with the fast fire rate guns. You know, because you got two fang here, and the more you hit stuff, the stronger you become. And for me, this one is. Flax orange and green skill trees to me do suffer a little bit from identity crisis to me they kind of feel like one big tree where everything kind of works together like the capstones is you get action of uh, damage you get bonus damage after using action skill which the rack attack is the fastest action skill one but megavore allows you to crit uh, all the time which can get your longer action skill fadeaway back quicker so these two are kind of just about using your action skill as much as possible and rinsing things um so I, I think what I'm looking for um, in a Vault Hunter is very clear identities for your skill trees. And that's something that, you know, Borderlands 2 did very, very well. You look at Krieg, that's a character that I was drawn to the absolute most. 
you have the mania skill tree which is all melee you have the torch skill tree which is all fire and you have the the bloodlust skill tree which is all about taking everything in the game and making it good you know everything around you get bonus mag size you get bonus gun damage grenade damage melee damage like no matter what you do with your build this could be a supplemental piece to it right a support this is your support skill tree so you got fire damage melee damage and support and you can also get gun damage out of it but i like clear identities for skill trees when i look at this skill tree it says trapper right so i got this gravity snare and to me when i look at it it's all about trapping enemies and and that's really cool and i'm assuming when i trap enemies i must be getting tons of bonuses right no almost everything in this go tree is about pets this is a pet based skill tree and the capstone is defense which is incredible to me I honestly cannot believe they took the character that synergizes the most with health regen, base health regen, and gave its fourth skill tree shield synergies. Like, I, I honestly, I really just cannot believe that they chose Flak to have shield synergies for the, his defense. It's, it's, a, it's an identity crisis to me. Because Moe's, she's the big shield character. Right, Flak's got a bunch of health regen. You could... Do something with that and that skill tree and i get you maybe you want to have something like a something like a shield uh spec for it but uh, to me it just suffers from an identity crisis it's trying to do too many things so when it comes to the If clockwork res me. So when it comes to having bonus vault hunters over bonus skill trees, I personally prefer bonus vault hunters because then I get two more options because each time they've done bonus vault hunters has been two. I get two more options to find a character that I personally completely identify with. Like this character matches how i like to have fun and i get that all characters are fun but i like just using one character i'm a one character kind of lad i'm a one game kind of lad i've been playing borderlands since borderlands one spamming it every time the new game comes out spam it so like in wonderlands my only character that is maxed out beast mode is the berserker and i have farmed a bunch of builds for the berserker later kid so oh, sorry about that So I would prefer if they came out with new Vault Hunters instead of new skill trees in Borderlands 4. Um, and I know I'm saying that as if they're, they're guaranteed, guaranteed to do either of those. It's Gearbox, you never know what they'll do. That being said, I very much prefer three action skills over four, four skill trees. That being said, I very much prefer three action skills to one. I mean, that is just, to me, that's an absolute gimme. Wonderlands did it pretty cool where they had two action skills per character, but you can multi-class giving you a total of four action skills you could use. Although when I did use an action skill of a different character, I kind of felt a little bit like I was cheating on my Berserker, but that's something I got over over time. The one thing that I didn't like about that action, that system was that I could take a capstone from a different character. It felt a little bit weird to play Berserker, but then also just be able to take the capstone of the stabomancer but 
it did help me get to try out all the different characters in the game while also being forced to be tied down to the berserker as at least a secondary class which i thought was pretty cool like that i don't mind that being how wonderlands works right i, I make one character that i think I, I wouldn't mind always having at least a secondary as a secondary And then be able, being able to try all the different characters. I thought multi-classing was one of the coolest mechanics that I had ever seen. And when Blightcaller came out, I played a Blightcaller all the way through. You know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't I? And then when Redux came out, I played a Berserker all the way through. You know what I'm saying? Like, as you keep putting content out, I will keep... Go for a headshot here. Not enough damage. But on Flak, we're invincible, so it's not a really big deal. Not enough ammo. I always run on ammo, huh? I still don't have a cut purse launch pad. I look, I completely lost my enemy as soon as I pulled out one of my better weapons. Okay. So I, I know it is kind of a big ask to ask your box to make two more vault hunters that, oh my gosh. You kidding me, bro? So I think that was a named enemy and he dropped a legendary. So let's go see what that was. Dude, you're just getting absolutely rinsed and rinsed. It's it's a cosmetic item. But I honestly think that the devs of Gearbox could do it. Like, I, I the Borderlands Three Vault Hunters are are extremely in depth and well designed. From I think as a gamer, I think. I can really come to appreciate the Vault Hunter design in all the games, but specifically Borderlands 3, Wonderlands, Borderlands 2. I think those games have extremely well-designed characters. Um, Pre-sequel as well. I only played through Nisha on that one, but I thought she was extremely fun. I don't think I could ever maybe go back to using a different character. Do I not have a light show? I do. I'm running out of ammo on all my gun types. I need to find a vending machine. I could go Terror Regen. You know what? Yeah, let's just go... Should I go Terror Regen? It could be decent. Let's go ahead and slap on Terror Regen stuff. So my stop gap has Terror Terror Ammo Regen on it, and my Bouncy Frag Grenade, every time I activate my action skill, will give me ammo back in my magazine. And then let's use Rack Attack. More racks and more racks. And use weapon that's going to get me back my action skill, or get me back ammo. Let's just use the Monarch. So here we go, Tamar Terror Ammo Regen, gonna kick in. Once I get three stacks of it, it's gonna kick in a lot. There you go, 40 rounds. That should help me just sustain all the way through this zone. Make sure we get the bipod out. Thank you. And hopefully as we go, we will also find ourselves some more ammo. When it comes to Vault Hunter design, I think BL3 does have an advantage. That being said, BL2 does have two more Vault Hunters, and one of those became the character that I like the absolute most, Krieg. So, even there, when I try to come up with something where BL2 does it better, um, or BL3 does it better, you know, it's hard to come up with something. But the big one that most people will say, that I've heard most people say, and like kind of the irrefutable one, is gameplay. So people say that the gameplay in BL3 is better than BL2. It has sliding, right? It has mantling. It has slamming, right? It's just got more mechanics. And while I agree with that sentiment overall, I will say that the visual pollution factor really hurts gameplay. I think if you want to say that, it, that BL that BL3 has better gameplay, you have to take into account the visual pollution factor. There we go. And that I, I am using a snow drift, by the way. I mean, because I'm trying to push through a store. I got to get places faster. You know what I'm saying? Find the missing antler. But when it comes to actual gunplay, you know, being able to swap out for your bipod, dude. When, having a pet that does run around and does stuff can you chill out with that barrel actually you know what you go ahead <laughs> oh my gosh dude you're freaking me out you know get away get away from me what you made me do it's like 
actual gameplay interactions i feel like borderlands 3 has more it's just it's a much more advanced game borderlands 2 you kind of are like a static character that looks left looks up and down shoot stuff reloads can jump and can sprint which is more than enough to have a good game by the way but bo3 you can slide you can jump um sorry you can slide you can uh mantle which is a big thing for me you can swap out your weapon types you can also i'm not sure if this is a thing in bl2 but you can shoot and throw grenades at the same time i'm not entirely sure if that is a bl2 thing so when it comes to you know gameplay you know, experience and how you man maneuver around the world which is an absolute huge thing in most games i mean look at look at mario oh is that a boom sickle no look at mario the game is literally just your guy who jumps around obstacles right movement is such a huge key element of games and borderlands 3 i think does movement better than borderlands 2 but when it comes to gameplay i think the enemies you fight are a big part of that i think uh what you can see when you're fighting that fighting them is a big part of that and i honestly would say you know although borderlands 3 has better feeling overall weapons i don't think borderlands 2 is so far behind that i can that i can clearly give bl3 the edge in gameplay i just don't think i can i think bl2 has good enough gameplay mixed with less visual pollution to give it about the same in gameplay which is a big big reason why i would overall choose bl2 over bl3 despite there being lots of problems with bl2 namely like the the end game is extremely hard to push through slag is obnoxious um Oh, we have a Tom and Zam fight. This is gonna be crazy. This is this is put on your put on your best. Wait, a pearl of ineffable knowledge. I think this might be the one. I think this might be the one for my most character. We will not slap on that. All right, let's go Revolter. Go for the one shot here. Hopefully, we have enough ammo to get this job done. Let's go stack bot me. The weapon damage on it. Okay, and fade away. Fade away, gorillas in the mist. Okay, max damage. Hang one. Good night. Good night. Whoa, baby. Let's go. Any soul renders? Any soul renders? Do what I might do. I don't wait. I don't think Tom and Zam respawn now. This is gonna be a good time to check. I do not believe that Tom and Zam respawn during the quest line. Let's just go ahead and give it a give it a check here. Tom, Zam. No, they definitely do not. Okay, good to know. So, when it comes to gameplay, where most people would give the gameplay edge to BL3, I personally would give the edge to both games. I think both games have okay game, good good gameplay. That's a big reason why I play the games, because of good gameplay. But if you're talking BL2 versus BL3, and if you had to... What is going on here? It's a puzzle. Okay. But did I mess up the puzzle? Can I restart the puzzle? Lightning. Oh, I see. Okay, shoot the, get the bird. Get the egg. Egg me. Get the clock and get the horn. Very cool. Hey, there was a Wonderlands full paid DLC where the, that was the only thing you did before fighting a boss. You did that, that three times. You went and fought a boss that got progressively harder each week, which is really, really cool. But the problem was on launch, they didn't have the each week part in there and people just went to the final phase of it and then they were like oops we weren't supposed to that wasn't supposed to be ready until a month from now because each week we're gonna make it harder oh well well now that you the cat's kind of out of the bag like we already know like what it is like you, you you botched it anyways For character design, I give the edge to BL3. For gameplay, I actually give the edge to no one. I think it's it is equal, which overall does end up lean, making me lean towards. Go ahead and rinse this, dude. Lean towards Borderlands 2 as the the better overall game. When I play through Borderlands 2, I don't feel wanting for better characters. Like I think the characters are are fun enough to have a good gameplay experience every time you play the game. And that's coming from someone who plays Roguelance, who 
is I get to spam through all the characters every time I play them. I get to learn the mechanics from the ground up every time I play them. So I've played through those characters a lot. I have a pretty good idea of their strengths and weaknesses as a character. And I would give the edge for character design to BL3. And I know that's going to be a little bit of a controversial one. But to me, Moe's is incredibly designed. Flak feels amazing to play. And there's just something about... There's just something about the BL3 characters that they're complex, but simple. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially Flak to me, he feels complex, but simple. And ex let me explain what I'm saying, what I mean by that. They're complex as if, as in the skill trees have a lot of things that are going on. Flak, you got a lot, especially this orange tree, you got a lot of different stacking mechanics. Your very first skill is a, is a book, okay? You got a lot of different things going on, different numbers that are hard to calculate unless you sit down and actually do some pretty serious math. But at the end of the day, when you're playing Flak, it all turns into, you know, pretty simply, point your gun at things and shoot. You know what I'm saying? By the way, Vladov Company Man turns this monarch into an absolute devastating machine. Okay. Let's keep it, keep it rolling. And any, any person that I've had play Amara or any... And I've heard great things about people that have played through Zane and Amara. Let's, are we going the right way to reach this heart? We're going the wrong way. So for me, I would say character design, BL3 has it. So yeah, gameplay, I get, give it a tie. Character design, I give it to BL3 and visual pollution is still a major influence in that. So. It wouldn't, if, if visual pollution wasn't so bad in BL3, I would give its gameplay just absolutely m glowing scores. Um, like right here, especially with the light show, I get it's called the light show. But I, I would still say, and we can swap back over to our ammo, ammo regen stuff here. Let's go for the stopgap. Now we can apply terror and benefit from it. There we go. Reach the, the Githian's heart. Okay. I can do that. Githian. I need to reach your heart. I think I remember this zone. This is an annoying zone. I need to parkour up something. Right? How do I get up there? Here we go right here. Reach here. I think I've tried to reach the end of this zone for a farm once. Should I grab that? No. Collectibles, not worth it, right? <laughs> No snow drift on right now. Can keep the, the company man going. Let's see. Come up here. If visual pollution did not exist as much as it does in BL3, then I would be giving its gameplay glowing scores, especially in a, in a BL2 versus BL3 conversation. I would give it the edge to BL3 for sure. But because visual pollution enemy identification is so important in a first person shooter i have to give a tie score to be able to despite the movement in bl3 being so much better that being said i'm a little bit undecided with how i feel about the snow drift in general like should the snow drift be in the game but because that's only one item i don't necessarily think that it's like so game breaking that it's that big of a problem i think that it would be a little bit nicer if the snowdrift wasn't a non-unique relic. I think it would be kind of cool if the snowdrift was very, very specific and that's all it would do. Like, the only thing it did was give you movement speed. Other than that, oh, we're going to have to swap over to a boss shredder here. Wainwright, Jacobs! I'm going to save you. All right, swap over to a boss shredder. Let's go revolt me. Keep the same. I don't need terror, actually, to swap it off. Flat off company man, stack bot, monarch. Make sure that our everything is correct, correct. Okay. Let's try to see if we can do this in one go. Okay, it's not working. <laughs> okay, I gotta be really careful now. Not to burn too much ammo. 
Okay, let's see if we can get this done in one magazine. Oh, okay, we got her down a good amount. Do we have any pistol ammo left? No. Okay, it's gonna have to be, this is gonna have to be terror. We're gonna have to use terror to get through this fight. Unless I can use a sniper rifle or something. Um, I could use an SMG. Pistol, I can use, I can also use a queen's, a king's call here. Do my king's call. Put on a little bit of ammo regener uh, regeneration just for a moment. Use my racks. Like, look at look how cool Flack is. I mean, seriously. Here we go. Use. Swap to my Vladoff Company Man because it has a larger magazine. I can get a lot of ammo back. I don't need that much ammo for this to work. Okay, 49 rounds to get the job done. Swap over to a King's Call and swap over to a Jacob's Company Man. Go Revolter. And let's go. It's Piss Grenade. Let's go. Toss. That do any damage? No. It's you? Is it you? Who do I damage? I don't I don't want to waste my action skill for any reason. Let's go back to fade away as well. It's time for Flack to do his thing. That didn't work. That didn't work either. Destroy Githian's hearts. I gotta shoot the crystals? Yeah, I gotta shoot the crystals. Okay, here we go. Ready? Gotta make sure I hit those nice shots. Those aren't crits, but that's okay. We'll be fine. Our pet will come and find us. It's also a king's call. Tap, tap, tap. This is an this is an insane fight. Just by the way. Okay, we're good on rounds. Ammo conservation, baby. Ammo conservation. I think this might be a job for the mitosis hunter seeker. To be honest with you, give me back my action skill a little bit faster. Go, my hunter seekers. Tap enemies, which will give me crits. Oh, just you literally have to hit the crystals. It's kind of insane. Mitosis hunter seeker, go. Where's another crystal? Okay, on these arms, it looks like there's more crystals. There we go. Big crystal right there. On the arms, on the arms, crystals. No. Can I damage him yet? I cannot. Mitosis Hunter Seeker me. I got my diehard Borderlands player, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm I love these boss fights. Like I really enjoyed the overall experience of the game. Like I'm a huge fan of the series. So as a as a huge fan of the series, I would love to get, see the game be as good as it possibly can be. Obviously. And so what that looks like in, in the at the end of the day for me is a combination of a lot of different things from a lot of the, the different games. And each game, they're going to do things differently. And every time you do something differently, it doesn't mean one is necessarily better than the other. But sometimes that is the case. And I just feel like BL2 had better clarity. BL3 has better character design. And this is where we come down to the, the final one. Ooh, is that a Rowan's call? 58,000. That's going to be decent. We'll take it. Um, we're going to officiate the wedding. We're going to get our pearl. We're going to go over to Ice of the Invincible so we can farm our Skull Masher. This brings us in. Here's the story part of it. I don't think the story in BL2 is like some sort of like goaded, never, never will see again great story. I think the Handsome Jack storyline is very much like... There's a whole lot of just if Jack's as powerful as he said as we think he is, we'd already be dead kind of stuff going on, where it's just kind of like a miracle that we're still alive going on. Whereas Borderlands 3 has a lot more moving parts. Oh, yes, this is the uh, the end credits. We pushed through DLC too. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. But when it comes to the story. I think BL3 really missed, really missed when they did Maya's death. I think people were kind of barely hanging on after Eden 6 with how much waiting you had to do to listen to dialogue. People were waiting around. And at the end of Eden 6, I believe is when she dies. I could be wrong about that. 
but that death combined with Eden 6, because Eden 6 on my very first playthrough was when I decided to push main story. I'm like, I, I can't do it anymore. I just do too much waiting around. So I think they really missed with Maya's death. And I think they missed with the ending of the game, final boss fights. I think the Troy fight is good. I wish the Troy fight had different stakes. Like Troy was maybe stronger. Maybe he, at this point, he maybe he had turned on Tyrene. The Troy fight was fine. To me, the Tyrene fight was very underwhelming because we didn't get to fight Tyrene. We got to fight the Destroyer mixed with Tyrene's body. It was visually hard to identify what it was exactly you were fighting. The Warrior, very easy to identify who we are fighting. The Dragon Lord, it's so easy to identify who we are fighting. Big monster Tyrene, is that, where's Tyrene? I'm really just fighting this big void monster. There, oh, there's her head, but it's like not, no. I wanted to fight Tyrene with her, with her costume. You know, with with her character, with the power that she has been showing us is is defeating everyone. Not this, not this monstrosity. That's what made BL2's ending so much more satisfying. Was that Jack's plan succeeded? You defeat his monster, but now you now you deal with Jack. With Tyrene, Tyrene's plan succeeds despite us always getting there first. Tyrene's plan succeeds. She becomes the monster. We defeat the monster. Now there's no Tyrene. And it wasn't like we got a phase one, phase two where Tyrene, like look at Dark Souls. They do so many of these fights that the enemy transforms mid fight between phases. Phase one could have been Tyrene. Phase two could have been the destroyer or something. Or, and then phase three could have been Tyrene and the destroyer. You know what I'm saying? I think BO3 story missed with the final boss missed with maya's death which are two of the hugest plot points it's the maya's death is supposed to be the time you cry right roland's death is supposed to be the time you cry and we do maya's death instead of feeling sadness i kind of just felt frustration with the mo the time i am like being sad is filled with ava just going off like i get it ava you are mad. Completely get it. Where do I got to go, by the way? Where can I get my... Did I get a Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge? I can check my... Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge. I did. Did I not? No. How do, how do I get my Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge? Okay, so it looks like I did get my Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge. This is my Moe's character. Who I thought maybe I had transferred it over, but nope. There's... There's my pearl sitting right there. Actually, it looks like I got very similar stats, which is pretty unfortunate. Yeah, the one I got on my flak is fire rate and health regen. The one I have on my moats is fire rate and max health. You have got to be kidding me. Hey, you know what? We have a pearl on our flak now, which is absolutely huge. And we had a pretty good discussion, BL2 versus BL3. Hope that, uh... I, I really wanted to talk about it in general, just because everyone talks about it in, like, all their videos. And I have my own opinion, so... That's going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Subscribe to see more videos like this one. And in the next video, we are definitely going to be heading back to Ista and farming for the Skull Masher. See you next time. Bye.